I'm here with my friend Mark Sanborn. Mark is a guru of leadership, customer service. He has worked with some of the largest companies, smaller companies, all kinds of companies, individuals um, for, for, I won't say how many years, but for a while. A long He's time. also sold millions of books and he is one of the, the most quoted people on uh, leadership and customer service. I want to ask you, talk a little bit about customer service. What is it that makes customer service extraordinary? What, what is it that you just say, wow, that is it? I think customer service becomes extraordinary when it's memorable in a positive way. Uh, I always say we don't recommend movies we like. We recommend movies we love. Now, if I see a movie and you ask me about it, I'll say, yeah, it was a good movie. But if I see a movie and I thought it was a fantastic movie, I call you up. I say, Skip, go, don't miss this movie because I want you to have the same experience I had. And so I think what makes customer service great is when we say, I got to tell my friends. I got to tell, honey, guess what happened today at fill in the blank. And the thing that we forget is that sameness isn't memorable. You know, we can get it all right and still not have great customer service. Getting it all right keeps you from having bad customer service, but it doesn't keep you. From, it doesn't help you achieve great customer service. The second thing I think is that great customer service isn't perfect, but it's good at recovery. I had coffee this morning with a friend, and we were talking about this heinous experience uh, that I had had and what didn't come out of it, even though I twice contacted the company to give them some feedback. In a very professional, civil way, I said, look, I've had a bad experience, I want to give you the feedback, and the manager at this particular establishment ignored me both times. And my friend Dave said, wow. You it, just got a chapter in a book. Yeah, I was going to say, for me, it's speech material, but right. my friend Dave said, isn't it amazing that that stuff happens? I said, no, it's not amazing that those experiences happen. It's amazing that when a company has a chance to make it right, they don't. You know, my, I pride myself on the service we provide in my little company, but we're not perfect. What we're pretty good at and what we work very hard to do is when someone does experience a service failure, overcompensating. Not just mm -hmm. fixing what broke, but making it up to them so they then say, you won't believe what happened. We ordered some stuff. It got lost in the mail. They not only replaced it, they sent us $100 worth of free stuff. And that, that's an example of how things are going to go wrong. The question is, what do you do to correct it and recover from it? Well, I want to talk about that because you, you say $100 of free stuff. I, I've told a story about Morton's and somebody was sending a tweet out that people have heard and, you know, I wish I could have this filet and all of a sudden it's there at the airport and it's extraordinary and it's one of those, I have to tell you, and it became a, a new story. But what about the entrepreneur, the small business who's kind of like, I got to watch profits. And every time you talk about customer service, you're talking about giving away all this money and I'm going to go broke trying to create customer service. What do you say to that person about thinking customer service, if it's too good, I'm going to lose uh, my shirt? Well, I think that's largely an illusion because the challenge is to outthink rather than outspend your problems. Uh, there are a lot of things we can do that don't cost us much. Uh, my brother, uh, as we were talking earlier off camera, owns a, a brew pub. And I know what craft beer costs, I mean the hard cost. And even really good craft beer, uh, a pint of craft beer is going to be somewhere between 60 to 85 cents on average. So if you have a bad experience in a restaurant and uh, your, your food took too long, why wouldn't the waiter, the wait person, come over and say, let me buy you a beer? Well, on the menu, the beer is $6.00. The hard cost of them might be 60 cents. I'd be giddy. I'd say, you know what? Make me wait longer. Buy me a second beer. And the point is, for 60 cents, you've just regained the customer's business. You didn't comp them the meal. You, you didn't you know, give them a, a certificate for $50 on their next visit. But you found a little thing that mattered to them but didn't cost you much. And I think that's really, in my book, The Fred Factor, as you know, because you've, you've been a great uh, supporter of that work. I say, replace money with imagination. Replace capital with creativity. And then you stop, because the more money you throw at something, the less likely it's the best solution. Money is what you do when you lack imagination. Uh, creativity is what you do when you say, you know what, I'm going to make the customer happy, but I'm, I'm going to get creative in how I do it. Mm. And just personality, too. You know, just you know, give them that beer and, and have a little fun with it and be, be real. It's such, such, I'm thinking about a it's story so myself easy. It's so uh, easy. that happened last night. One of the things I, I recently read, um, I don't remember when, but you were talking about the number one enemy of customer service, and you said it is indifference. And that just drives me crazy when they seem to be like, yeah, whatever. What, t tell us a little bit more about that. It's seeing indifference, what, what does that do? Indifference is a lack of engagement. I'd rather you disagree with me than ignore me. 
you know, we've all had that experience where we reported a problem and the person said in a blasé tone of voice, oh, I'm sorry. Well, first of all, they're not really sorry. They're not sincere. And secondly, they haven't offered to do anything to make it right. Um, I, I think one of the big mistakes we make in the marketplace is uh, we don't teach employees that neutrality is a myth. There's no neutral. You're either for the customer or you're against them. You're either engaged or you're disengaged. And if you're disengaged, they're not saying, oh, honey, that's okay, they're just neutral. They're saying they're indifferent. And, and the research for years, I, I don't even know who originally did it, but intuitively it makes sense. Indifference is the number one killer of loyalty. So if nothing else, I'd rather you engage me and say, you know what, Mark, I gotta tell you, I appreciate your business, but you're wrong on this one. Let me explain why. I may not agree with you, but at least you didn't at ignore least me. Heard. Yes, I know you took me seriously. Well, let's talk about training. You mentioned training for customer service, hiring for customer service. If you have to split it, you know, you have to do both, hire and train people yeah. for customer service. But if you had to weight it more or the other, which is more important, hiring or training for customer service? Or can you, is that a false uh, assumption? False psychotomy? Well, the answer is both. Hire nice people, teach them the skills. Nice is not a skill. Nice is a predisposition. And they're there are probably people that can take mean people and make them nice, but you and I don't have time, right? We don't have enough budget to do that. So you hire nice people, and then you teach them the specific skills. So you hire a nice person to be a bank teller, a different set of skills than if you hire a nice person to work in a call center. You can teach skills. Nice, hard to teach. Hard to teach. Hire for nice, teach for specific skills. How about customer service? So we talk about individuals, we talk about leaders, we talk about managers. How do you develop a customer service culture where where it's passionate you know i've i've talked with people like uh, zappo ceo tony shea and others who have yeah. these cultures how do you develop that culture of passion for the customer and really not having any you know indifference but you know i really care how can you teach that at a larger scale well tony's a great example and, and i'm a big fan of, of zappos and, and tony and i uh, have become familiar uh, via email he's endorsed a couple of my books and i've studied his company the thing is, it begins with a leader because the, the leader uh, is, is emotional about what matters. Now, by emotional, I don't mean they're some kind of hyperbolic cheerleader, but you know from where they spend their time, their money, their attention, that this matters. And people at know Tony knows, they, they know what matters to Tony. When you're willing to get emotional about what matters, that makes a big impact on the people who deliver what matters. And I think the second part of that is, is you give people a very clear sense of values and then you give them the latitude to deliver. Uh, one of my favorite examples, 2005, December, uh, call center uh, rep for Zappos spends something like four hours and five minutes on the phone with an elderly woman who calls to return a pair of shoes. Now, returning shoes doesn't take four hours and five minutes, but it's Christmas, the woman is lonely, she talks to her four hours and five minutes. And I always say, what would have happened at most companies? Boom, you're out of here because you just blew your, your call ratio for the day. At Zappos, they, they reward the it metric, right? because they say the, the, the mission to deliver wow. If your mission is to deliver wow, you better deliver wow. If your mission is to say, you know, not spend too much time on the phone, that's a different mission statement. But it's about being really clear on what matters. And I think uh, Tony and Zappos are very clear. It's about delivering wow. And by the way, as we both know, and as, as, your, as our listeners know, it's been very profitable. Very profitable. Well, I will add uh, two other things that people can do to build a great culture get your books and have people read them God bless or you. have you come in and speak because That's even it better. Will help. so anyway <laughs> well, thank, thank you very you. much my pleasure thanks, thanks.